he sat down and then he held my hand and then he said, you know dear, it's not that I don't love you but I don't think I can put you in A ward. Motherhood to me is fulfilling, but with great costs on a woman's health and body. For duty and love, a woman often neglects herself and forfeits her fitness. But we can only fulfill our duties and love as mothers if we learn to keep ourselves active and healthy. Once a school physical education teacher and now a fitness trainer for new mothers, Karine is who you'd call a FISPO. However, that doesn't mean she has it easy in her journey of becoming a mother herself. I've known Karin since 2012. She's one of the graduates of V College. And what caught my attention was she can actually do pull-ups after giving birth to a pair of twins. And at the point of time, I wanted to get back my physique because I sprained my ankle for a year and have not been exercising. And I wanted to get back, you know, that exercise regime. So in order to do that, I was looking for a women trainer and also someone who understand a woman who has given birth before. So, Karim. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I understand that when you were in uh, Nanyang Business School, you were actually taking business. But why? Why did you choose physical education? Have you been like uh, a very active person? Yeah, since pre young? pretty much. I've yeah. been an active person, and even when I was in NTU and since college time, I, I was a climber. I climb. I climb oh. a lot, and I climb competitively. Um, during uh, university time. So yeah, pretty much climbing and then mm. after that I uh, progressed to coaching other people how to climb, like you know, teaching kids and all that. So I had been kind of like teaching. Okay. So, and I thought physical education was good. It's mm. a good subject to teach, right? Because you kind of like get to move around and you're out in the field with the kids, right? Wow. And all that. So in the year 2010, when I was teaching, I, I got pregnant mm. and then it was an unexpected pregnancy. Okay. And then and oh. everybody was like, wow, yeah, wow, wow. <laughs> but they didn't know that, you know, there's a lot of things going on oh. you know, behind, behind the pregnancy. Okay, maybe share a little bit more about this pregnancy with twins. Uh, yeah, mm. so, so that was a difficult pregnancy. Yeah. But then at 27 weeks, uh, at the gynae check, um, uh, the results was that you know I actually had a preeclampsia. So so there was a urine test, right? Okay. There was a high protein level. So it's an indication that there's a high blood pressure. Preeclampsia simply means high blood pressure during pregnancy. Um, it only occurs during pregnancy, and it will kind of like be gone once babies are delivered. It means that at 27 weeks, I went to KKH, and KKH wouldn't let me go home until the babies were delivered at 31 weeks. And that was about four to five weeks. Right. Why, why did you choose a public hospital instead of going to a private hospital? So I was actually following up with a private gynae and then once she saw, okay, twins, you have this condition, straight away, she wrote a referral letter, asked my husband to bring me to a and &E get KKH immediately. This entire episode of uh, pregnancy and delivering and giving birth to twins was uh, difficult at that point in time and I had to take a break from teaching for a while because oh. the twins were early, right? 30, 31 weekers. You mean you gave birth at 31 weeks? Yes, 31 which weeks. Which is less than 8 months of pregnancy. Yes, oh. so Kiran was only 1 kg. Uh, Kiran uh, is? Uh, it's uh, uh, twin 2, the boy. Twin 2, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and twin 1, Asha, she was 1.6 kg. Wow. Yeah, so very tiny, like, you know, they literally fit into this uh, on a palm like that. But then they were in the incubators, of course. And by the time we take our standard four months maternity, right, they basically were at newborn size. And I heard also you were kind of like have to bed rest before giving birth to them. That was like how long? Oh yeah, so the doctors and nurses will always tell you, don't move, stay in bed, don't run around, everything. But then they will end up finding me downstairs walking around. To have you a uh, bit rest for like one and a half months or so with twins in ICU, how's the medical bills like? Just the kids' bill, okay, not mine. Okay, let's say including okay, just the kids', kids bill. bill yes. All right, uh, not 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 including mine. All right, uh, after all the deductions and rebates and whatever, we still probably had to fork out about like twenty plus thirty k cash. 
30k cash around there after all the subsidies and luckily you are in a public hospital in Singapore. How about including yours? Uh, including mine, so for some reason luckily mine was claimable by insurance because I think one or two years before that NTUC income actually included pre eclampsia as one of the conditions that you can is claimable. So which was pretty lucky. They pretty much covered the hospital the hospital stay. So after subsidy and all that, my portion of the stay was about five K plus. At twenty eight years old to fork out like for example thirty thousand cash, cash. Is, yeah. It's really a lot of Do you know money. how long we had to save for thirty thirty K, right? Yes. And not to say before that, uh, a year or two ago you have to invest invest in your marriage mm. and your new home mm, mm, yes mm, correct correct so a lot there's a lot of cash out already mm. right and mm. i'll tell you something that which i will always remember so so you know I, i'm the one lying in bed and all that so my husband's the one like settling all the administration mm. talking to the doctors going to the admin office for uh for administration uh, admission and all that right so he came back from the admission office and then he sat down and then he held my hand and then he said you know, dear, it's not that I don't love you, but I don't think I can put you in a ward. I think a lot have to do. It also has to do with expectations again. Already at that point in time, because most of your friends and all, they when they give birth, or you see them going to a ward and then Thompson what, and then they have this nice suite and all that, and then you get to rest in peace, you know, in in your own room and all that, right? After delivery and all that. But I'm like, huh? I go through four weeks of all this, and after delivery, I still cannot like you know sleep in peace or rest in peace in my own room. And yet, I also know that. It's, it's a real situation how he's just being realistic because if I had stayed in A ward the kids ICU bills and follow up bills and whatever everything will be private yes it will not be 30k yes it will be a six digits probably right because yes. uh, there won't be any form of a subsidies yeah uh, if uh, we were to stay in the mm. highest uh, level ward mm. and I heard your second pregnancy is also not that cheap also, right? So maybe you want to share about after that, the next pregnancy because you have your third child mm. in your second pregnancy, yes. Yes, um, yeah, not, not that cheap but okay, cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in 2019, um, I, I got pregnant again unexpectedly, you know that. <laughs> and then um, this time round, it was a little bit different because it was one baby. Right? So to me, I felt like, you know, oh, finally I can, I can, you know, maybe it was, uh, you know, the universe uh, signal to tell me that I can enjoy a normal pregnancy as per any normal woman, glowing pregnancy, I can do my prenatal exercises, you know, then I can go through a VBAC delivery, basically means a vaginal birth after C-section. So because of the twins, the first uh, delivery I had was a C-section and then if I want to go through a normal, you know, vaginal birth, it's called a view bed, alright? And I thought I could do that, right? You know, the experience, you know, what natural delivery and all that's all about because having learned all about women's health and fitness and all that, I also have a little bit more understanding and understood that, you know, uh, the na a natural birth process has a lot of positive effects uh, for m both mother and baby. So this is expectation, right? Um, but anyway, this bugger went against my expectations and dreams of having a, a natural birth. He kicked open and burst his water bag at 34 weeks, right? So, um, so everything went down again from there. So then once again, uh, from a private doctor, I had to make the decision to go to KKH again. This time around, it was a little bit different. The doctor did not send me to KKH. <laughs> I got to make the decision myself. Part of the biggest factor to us for making any decision was finance, mm. right? Because you have to think about it, right? At 34 weeks, if baby is coming out within the next two weeks or so, it's still going to be ICU, right? And if it's ICU, then, oh my gosh, I'm going to get bankrupt again. <laughs> So abdominal separation is really the first uh, uh, so-called issue, you know, or condition that got me interested. Okay, and then when baby pops, it doesn't mean that it pops back in, you know, <laughs> right? What took nine months to expand will take at least nine months, if not actually usually much more longer time to get back to normal again. <laughs>